You take a look at the weekend. If you're Wichita, you had to be frustrated because yes. the Friday night game, you know, you're up four zip heading into the third. Common score four unanswered. Two where they pulled the goalie. I mean, you're lucky to get one when you pull the goalie, but they yeah. got two and then ended up winning in the shootout. I've only seen that happen three times in 20 years where you've gotten two with the goalie pulled like that. I mean, three times in 20 some years, you know, and it works that night. There's a lot of things that worked that night. You know, I've only seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I've seen four games now where they've come back from four to nothing down to to win the game. You know, I mean, it's just they it were just a remarkable weekend. Yeah. So is this a weekend where you can really puff your chest if you're the Comets, saying that this is kind of a statement weekend for them to say that they're back? Because as we've mentioned many times before, the first period of the first game of a week has really been atrocious throughout the entire season. But the last you know, three or they, four years, they overcame, been they overcame it. Yeah. And did it in a big fashion on Friday night. You know what? I don't. I think that's when this team gets in trouble, when it thinks it's it's got it figured out and okay, now we're rolling. It's like that's when they get in trouble. I mean, again, Friday night they were coming off the three game sweep in Texas. Uh, they should have been fine, and they fall down for nothing again. I mean, as soon as they think they've got it figured out, is when they get in trouble because they let up. Okay. Now I want to talk about the roster because we mentioned Morasti. Um, but also Keith Roger released this weekend to make some room. There's some shifting around of the guys on injured reserve. Where is this team in terms of injuries? Because most of the guys are on 10-day. Right. Uh, Chris Francis is on 10-day right now. Um, and I think that's as much of after the turnover he made Friday night. That, as, in the second period, that yeah, was that, a bad one. That was pretty bad, um, you know, as anything. And that's kind of like it's what you do. I mean, it's, you know, if a guy's – that's the options you have as a coach. Uh, you don't have a roster where you can just afford to bench a guy or sit him out because your roster, they got to play. That's the way the roster situation works out in this league. So you end up using the 10-day IR for some of that. Um, and plus, at this point in the year, nobody's feeling 100% anyway. So, you know, it could be a legitimate injury. It could just be a rest injury like they did with Matthew Curdo and his back. I mean, mm -hmm. that 10 days has made a world of difference for him. Um, but they're going to have to get to the point where they're going to have to to let some guys go. I mean, uh, unless, you know, every time a guy goes on IR like that, he has the option of, okay, we can release you or we can put you on 10-day IR, and the guys always choose to stay. Sure. I mean, so they have that right. Um, but it'll be interesting because the trade line deadline is today. As of five minutes ago, we were taping this before the trade deadline uh, passed, and I was told that there's nothing going on right now. And there's pretty much nothing going on around the league right now. So I've heard that, too. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, the other deadline that's coming up is, I believe it's Friday, is the European deadline. So guys that are coming back from Europe have to be here by Friday. So if they're going to look for a defenseman there, maybe, mm -hmm. that's a possibility. Um, we'll just wait and see. And we'll wait and see this week because you've got four games in five days starting Wednesday night. Um, as we've mentioned, you know, the Wednesday games or whether it's the Friday game being the first game of the week are tough. Uh, Bloomington, a team that they are, are not necessarily friendly with. No. Um, I guess that's fair to say. Uh, how big of a week is it? Because these are three of the four games are going to be at home with the Saturday game being at Dayton. Well, let's put it this way. If you can, five game win streak's nice. But if you can keep that going, and then, then you're legitimately rolling. I mean, really legitimately hot and legitimately rolling. They've got three of the four games at home. The other one's a two-hour trip to Dayton. I mean, this is the ultimate schedule for them for a week. Um, plus, they've got all the excitement with Morasti coming in, and Leo should be able to come back Wednesday, so should Brandon Warner. I mean, let's face it, they're never going to be healthier or more ready with their lineup than they can be Wednesday night. All right. Should be very interesting to see this week, see if the Comets can make some more ground. They hit the 500 mark this past week, and uh, all the chicken littles that said the sky was falling earlier in the season, as you mentioned, eating a little bit of crow right now as the team moves up in the standings. It's been interesting. It certainly has. He's Blake Sebring. I'm Glenn Marini. Thank you for logging on to Wayne.com. We'll be back next week for another edition of Inside the Zone.